Hello there, my name is Gary Sims from Android Authority. Earlier this year, I reviewed the Qbox i, a mini PC and media player that can run Android and Linux. And now Solid Run, the device's manufacturer, has released a new version, the Qbox TV. So let's see how the old version compares with... No, no, let's see how the new version compares with the... Okay, let's see how the new version compares. At just two inches by two inches by two inches, the Qbox TV is a marvel of engineering. On one side of the cube is a set of ports, including the power socket, HDMI, Ethernet, and two USB ports, while the rest of the cube is fairly bland, except for a few labels, logos, and LEDs. The Qbox TV comes in three variants with different amounts of RAM, one gig, two gigs, and four gigs. All three models pack a quad-core processor and you have the option of adding a Wi-Fi module and buying an IR remote control. My test unit is the Qbox TV 4GB with Wi-Fi and the remote control. As the TV part of the name implies, the Qbox TV is designed to be a media centre and there are two ways of doing this. One is to use Android with apps like Netflix and YouTube and the other is to use Linux with programs like Kodi. Solid Run provides a couple of Linux distros that boot straight into Kodi. One of them is Geekbox XBMC and the other is OpenELEC. OpenELEC is a small Linux distribution that turns the Qbox TV into a Kodi media center. When you buy the Qbox TV, it comes with an 8GB micro SD card preloaded with Kodi. This makes using Kodi a breeze. Just boot up the Qbox and you're straight into the media player. Since the Cube comes with two USB ports, you can connect flash drives or external drives packed full of your media. I did a brief test by connecting up a Transcend 2TB external hard drive with some MP4 files on it. The hard drive was recognised by the Qbox without any problems. I was able to navigate to the files from within Kodi and play the videos. The playback was smooth and the sound comes through the HDMI cable to the TV. Kodi itself is a quite sophisticated piece of software and offers easy ways to view your videos and pictures, as well as listen to your music. However, it also has a powerful add-on system, which allows third-party developers to create plugins. For example, there is a YouTube plugin available. I downloaded it and installed it via Kodi's internal installation system, and I was able to access YouTube without any problems. There are a myriad of add-ons available. However, your mileage may vary in terms of which commercial services you can access. You can optionally buy an infrared remote control which works specifically with the Qbox and Kodi. The remote is easy to use and allows you to perform simple navigation with a set of direction keys and an OK button in the centre to perform actions. There is also a back button, a menu button and a play pause button. The Qbox TV also works with a variety of Kodi remote controls that you can find in the Google Play Store. Although OpenELEC comes by default, it isn't your only choice of OS. If you want to try another operating system, then Solid Run has a special boot image called Ignition, which allows you to easily download new firmwares. First, you need to download Ignition from the Qbox TV website and write it onto a memory card using Win32 Disk Imager. Then you boot the Qbox TV with Ignition and use its simple UI to pick which operating system you want to use. Ignition will then download the OS and write it onto the micro SD card. Once copied, you just reboot the Qbox and the new OS will start up. The Qbox TV is compatible with Android and currently runs Android 4.4 KitKat. It's one of the official firmwares that you can download via Ignition. I understand that Solid Run are working on Android 5 for the Qbox TV, however there is no official release date yet. The Android experience of the Qbox is pretty good and for the most part you get the same experience as you would as from a smartphone or tablet, of course without the touchscreen. Like the humming board in the previous generation of the Qbox, the new model includes Google Apps, so you can access the Play Store as well as Google services like Gmail, Google+, YouTube, and so on. The performance of the Qbox TV is better than the humming board i2EX and the Qbox i, mainly because of the jump from dual-core to quad-core processor. The Qbox TV scored 14,812 on AND22, some 2,500 more than the previous generation, and for Epic Citadel you get frame rates of around 27 or 28 FPS. 
There are two minor problems with using Android on the QBox TV. The first is that only the first two gigabytes of RAM are recognized even on the four gigabyte model. Now, from what I understand, Slade Runner working on a 5.x release of Android, and that should fix this particular problem. The second problem is that external hard drives and external USB drives aren't recognized when they're plugged into the USB port. And one way that's understandable because it isn't something that normally happens on an Android device. People don't often plug hard disk drives into their smartphones. There are several different Linux distributions available for the QBox TV, many by recognition. On the list you will find popular names like Debian, Arch and OpenSUSE. Unfortunately many of the distros come without a desktop and need to log in via the command line interface. That doesn't mean you can't add a desktop, but some extra effort is required. One exception is OpenSUSE. During the ignition installation, you can opt to install XFCE. There's quite a strong community behind all of Solid Run's products, including the Hummingboard and the QBox range. So there's no shortage of Linux distributions for those who want to hack, port, code and tinker. This means that the QBox offers just as many opportunities as any of the other popular SBCs and mini PCs. However, I would say it is only a mini PC and you probably can't replace your desktop PC with this particular machine. The QBox TV is certainly an interesting mini PC and media center. It offers lots of flexibility since its support for Android and Linux is excellent and it does excel at running Kodi. The new iteration updates the internals of the box and has the options for a four gigabyte variant. This isn't a major revamp, just a further development of the previous generations. But as with most tech, a bump in specs is always welcome. The design of the little cube is neat and elegant. The box is certainly unpretentious, but yet when noticed it will surely impress. It's certainly a tidy way to turn a normal TV into a smart TV or a media player. You can purchase the QBox TV starting at $99.99 directly from Solid Run's QBox TV website. Okay, so there you have it, the QBox TV. The fact you can get a four gigabyte variant is a great option for this little device. It's very versatile, excellent at running Linux, excellent at running Android, but really comes into its own when it runs Kodi. If you're a fan of Kodi, you should definitely consider one of these. If you love the QBox i, you're definitely gonna love the QBox TV. The main sticking point, however, is still the price. It is more expensive than other products that are available. Well, my name's Gary Sims from Android Authority. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe to Android Authority's YouTube channel, and please leave some comments below to tell me what you think about the QBox TV. Have you tried one? Did you have a QBox I? Let us know your experiences below. And as for me, I'll see you in my next video.